What's up everyone, Eber here with Hardware Connects, and today we're investigating something that's a little bit interesting, and it involves mining. Now, before you start throwing away your keyboards, mice, or cell phones at me, hear me out for a second. I'm completely aware of how cryptocurrency has affected the GPU market. I mean, from a gamer's perspective, it's actually very difficult to find a GPU due to demand, and even if you do, you're gonna be paying quite the penny to buy one, because let's be honest, prices on GPUs these days are ludicrously high. Now, recently I came across something that involves mining with Threadripper CPUs, and that triggered me for a second. So I decided to investigate that in depth, and to my surprise, it's actually a lot more fun than GPU mining. So allow me to walk you through my experience mining with a CPU. But first, a quick message from our sponsor. So it was kind of love at first sight, you know? There's really nothing like this exterior. I love the metallic color, the tinted glass panel, the RGB fans at the front. It's basically a see-through case, and who doesn't love that? Your graphics card can go vertical, the top is radiator friendly, and the right side is so unique when exposed thanks to these cable covers. So you can show off everything you've got with the H500P by Cooler Master. Check it out in the description below. All right, before I get to the setup process and reveal the results, there are a few things that you need to be aware of. First and foremost, I'm completely new to this. So if I miss out on any key information, please let me know in the comments down below. Secondly, there are so many ways to approach mining. The first one would obviously be by using your graphics card or multiple GPUs if you want to increase your hashing rate. Remember, the higher the hash rate, the higher your payout at the end of the day. Um, now, if you want to take things to the next level, you can actually use your smartphones to mine. I'm not kidding. There is an algorithm specifically designed uh, to mine on your CPUs, actually on your smartphones, because it can take advantage of the ARM processor that's built inside your smartphones. I think the currency that it mines is Electronium, and it uses the Kryptonite algorithm, which is what we'll be working with, but not on the cell phone, on the Threadripper processor. So uh, I would never mine with my phone, by the way. I, I just wouldn't, because this is... No, no, just no. Actually, why I wanted to do this was to see if these new algorithms and processors could at least compete with GPUs in some way. So let's see how that looks. Remember, each cryptocurrency runs off a specific algorithm. For example, Ethereum runs off the ETHash algorithm, Litecoin runs off the Script algorithm, uh, and in our case, we're gonna be mining Monero using the Kryptonite algorithm. Kryptonite was designed initially to take advantage of the CPU resources, and it requires about two megabytes per instance, uh, meaning it fits in the L3 cache per core on modern processors. Now, interestingly enough, the Threadripper 1950X and the 1920X feature a whopping 32 megabytes of L3 cache. That means, theoretically, the mining workload can be spread across 16 threads at two megabytes per thread, which is the optimal requirement for the Kryptonite algorithm. This would then leave us with an additional 16 threads to play around with while mining Monero. For instance, you can browse the web, watch YouTube videos, heck, even edit a video, which is pretty awesome. Setting up the software is actually pretty straightforward. All you have to do is download the XMR stack zip file from this GitHub link, and I'll make sure to leave this link in the description down below. Next up, you extract the folder and run the XMR stack.exe application as admin and follow the on-screen prompts. I actually decided to take a different approach to this by editing the config text file that was initially generated after executing the application because by default, this program configures the CPU and the GPU for mining and I ran into some issues using both. So here's what I did. I opened up the config file and I manually entered my pool address. In my case, I was using NiceHash and I highly recommend using the service if you're new to mining. Next up, I entered my wallet address. This is something that's custom made and designated to your NiceHash account. The pool password by default is set to X. I'd leave it as is. And finally, make sure to set the value of use underscore NiceHash to true. The last thing you want to do is rename the XMR stack CUDA.dll file to something else if you're using an NVIDIA GPU or if you're using an AMD card, uh, rename the OpenCL file. This essentially allows the program to skip reading the GPU and head straight into using CPU resources for mining. Once that's done, you run the application as admin and give it a few minutes to connect to the pool service and you'll automatically witness the results. What we're looking for here is the hash rate. So the higher the hash rate, the higher your Bitcoin payout would be at the end of the day. Now, to put it in simple terms, uh, I'm basically selling my computer's hashing power to generate uh, or to solve different mathematical equations, which then creates new cryptocurrencies. And in return, I get paid in Bitcoins. At least that's how NiceHash works. Now, I'm not really sure how other pooling services approach this, but um, definitely put in the time to do your own research if you decide to use a different service. 
As for hardware, I'll be using AMD's 1950X 16 core 32 thread processor, uh, an ASUS Zenith Xtreme X399 motherboard, 64 gigabytes of Corsair's Vengeance RGB memory, a GTX Titan XP, and Be Quiet's Dark Power Pro 11 1001 80 plus platinum rated PSU. I did run these tests at stock settings, meaning I haven't done any overclocking with the CPU and the memory. I'll be comparing the results from the 1950X to Intel's Skylake X's offering, uh, namely the 18 core i9 7980XC Extreme Edition processor and the i9 7900X 10 core processor. What's interesting about these Intel CPUs is the amount of L3 cache they feature. Take this 18 core for example. This CPU has 24.7 megabytes of L3 cache, and when you run the CryptoNet algorithm, each core within the 7980XC CPU would start fighting for the L3 cache bandwidth, hence resulting in a lower hash rate when compared to the 1950X, which AMD has graciously given it 32 megabytes of L3 cache. So the application spreads it evenly across 16 threads, and as a result, you get a much higher hash rate, which in my case was around 1300 hashes per second, when compared to 877 on the 18 core. And just for kicks, here's how the 7900X performs. Now, another thing to take into account is profitability, because if you decide to get the 1950X just for mining, you wanna make sure that you get the proper ROI at the end of the year. Not to mention, this includes power consumption and how much you're willing to pay every month or every year, uh, just so you can make a few extra bucks by selling the hashing power on your PC. The first thing to calculate is the cost to run the system on a daily basis. And for that, I'm gonna be using a simple formula. You take the energy in kilowatt hours that your system draws, multiply that by the cost you pay per kilowatt hour, which gives you the cost to run the system per day in a dollar figure. Let's start with the 1950X. The total power draw from the PC was around 180 watts while mining. Multiply that by 24 hours, convert that to kilowatt hours, then multiply that by the cost. In my case, I chose 14 cents USD per kilowatt hour, uh, but this can vary significantly depending on where you live. As a result, we get roughly 60 cents per day or $18 per month. And here's how much power the Intel CPUs consume. I gotta be honest though, that 18 core processor is seriously one power hungry CPU as it draws almost 230 watts and that's just with 16 threads running at full utilization. Honestly, you're much better off with Threadripper if you're serious about mining with CPUs. Now, NiceHash does a pretty good job projecting the payout on a daily, weekly, and monthly basis. I did take the payout average for about two hours per CPU, and the results really do speak for themselves. However, I do have to warn you that the cryptocurrency market is highly volatile, so the Bitcoin payout can vary depending on its market standing. Sometimes you could get paid more, other times you'd be losing money depending on how large your running costs turn out. Now, for demonstration purposes, I'll be calculating the profit with a designated Bitcoin value. So case one, let's assume one BTC is worth 7,000 USD, and case two, with one BTC worth 14,000 USD. As you can see, with a 1950X, the projected payout is roughly $70, and when you take the difference of $18 for power costs, I end up with a profit at around $52 per month. Calculating case two with the 1950X yields us with a profit of around $122, I did the exact same analysis for the Intel CPUs, and just as expected, the profit doesn't seem to justify the investment, especially with the 18-core $2,000 i9 CPU. Take case one, for instance. With a Bitcoin value of 7,000, the estimated profit is around $23 per month, and the 10-core i9-7900X just doesn't make any sense for mining. Case two looks reasonably favorable to both Intel CPUs, but then again, you're much better off with AMD's Threadripper 1950X since it proves its efficiency for mining. And remember, we're calculating these profits based off an assigned static value for one Bitcoin. So if you're interested in mining with your Threadripper CPU, know your risks before investing because quite frankly, uh, cryptocurrency, this cryptocurrency market is highly volatile. It can it can crash, you never know, it's totally unexpected, it's not consistent, so yeah, I would definitely uh, understand, just definitely know what you're gonna invest in and, and then move on from there. Another thing that I'd like to reiterate is the fact that we're not actually mining Bitcoins, uh, because I don't think that's quite frankly possible at this point, because uh, it is quite difficult to do that. Essentially, what we're doing is we're using our hashing power to 
uh, mine new cryptocurrencies and the pool service that we're using, in this case, NiceHash, is paying us back in Bitcoins. Now, you could use your GPU to mine cryptocurrencies. I think the most profitable cryptocurrency to mine is Zcash. Uh, but again, that's totally varying depending on an hourly basis. Uh, but there are other alternatives. Another thing I need to point out is the ROI, because if you're just planning to invest on these high-end components just for mining, it'll definitely take you at least two years or maybe even more to cover the cost for the hardware initially. So do keep that in mind. With that being said, I decided to compare profits to a GTX 1080 Ti. I used the nice hash calculator to get the average BTC payout per day. And then I did the exact same case analysis by factoring in the power costs, which by the way, are significantly higher than the Threader per CPU. So under load, the total system power draw for the 1080 Ti was around 290 watts. And when you do the math, it really isn't that profitable when compared to the 1950X. Quick disclaimer though, these numbers for the 1080 Ti were based off mining Zcash rather than Monero, and these are just estimates. Nothing exactly is consistent. And those of you who are wondering if it's possible to use all 32 threads on a Threadripper CPU to mine Monero, uh, it's definitely possible, but it's not ideal. So for instance, uh, if you do want to set all 32 threads, all you have to do is go into the uh, cpu.txt file, and uh, reassign or set the threads in numerical order. So in this case, you would do 0 to 31 uh, to give you, you know, all 32 threads. And then you save the text file and then you run the program, which then utilizes all 32 threads. But the problem is that the hash rate as, as a result is significantly lower than using 16 threads or even uh, 24 threads. And the reason for this is that all 32 threads are fighting for that L3 cache bandwidth. Uh, and in this case, Kryptonite uses two megabytes per instance, which really doesn't make any sense to run on a 32 thread uh, system. So yeah, that's, uh, that's basically the end of it. So at the end of the day, what I recommend mining with a CPU, honestly, if you own a Threadripper based system, I think you should probably consider it because say for example, you're starting up a business uh, and you're working in a studio space, uh, you could potentially mine with your 1950X 16 core processor while also doing other tasks like browsing the web, doing productive things, or you know editing a video because you've got 16 threads to work with. Or if your primary program utilizes all 32 threads, well, you could use your system for that, but then when you leave the studio, you can just set your system to mine uh, and then come back the next day because uh, normally the after hours season or the after hour times are a lot cheaper to run when compared to the regular nine to five hours. So there are a lot of scenarios to, to use your CPU for mining guys. And I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Uh, what do you think about CPU mining? Is it something that you'd be interested in? And you could actually mine with your uh, existing PC. I mean, if you have a 1920X or a Ryzen 7 1700X, uh, that's possible you could do it but make sure but just understand that you're not going to be getting the highest hash rate when compared to the 1950x so yeah uh, let me know if i missed out on any key information once again in the comments down below i'm ebro with hurricane x thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one